Hello, welcome to Dan's Model Works, and today we're going to be putting the decals on a CF100 Canuck made by Avro. This kit was made by Hobbycraft probably 10 or 15 years ago. So far as I know, these kits are no longer being produced by Hobbycraft. I've been told that they're mainly uh, concentrating on model railroading, but these kits are still available on the secondhand market. So without any further ado, let's start work. Okay, so here's our subject. As you can see, it's posed quite excitingly in the spray booth. I basically, where the radome would go, I've put an eye hook in there so that I could hang it. And I did have it hanging when I airbrushed on the silver. And then after I had painted all the various other panels in slightly different colors of silver, I hung it back up again and I used tester's gloss coat. And the reason for using the tester's gloss coat is even metallic paints tend to be a little on the flat side, so giving your model a nice glossy finish to start with will help the decals to adhere. And if we flip it over, we can see that the landing gear doors are in place. I will be building this with the landing gear down, but it was easier for painting just to simply put those doors in place and then I'll take them off later. So let's take this guy off the hook. Okay, here we are at my hobby bench and you may notice that the pilot and the reader operator seats are not installed. They were installed, however, when I decided to test fit my canopy, I discovered that the canopy does not fit over top of the seats. So I had to break those loose and I will be removing basically the feet from the seats so that when I reinstall them, the canopy will fit on top. Now I can't see that anyone's going to look and say, oh my God, the seats are too low. So, before we start decaling, I'm also going to be removing the horizontal stabilizer. Now, it is just slid on there. It's a pressure fit. And that'll make it a little bit easier to put the decal on the rudder. And I'm also going to be propping it up on its landing gear temporarily, just to make it a little bit easier to handle. Okay. Okay, here we go. As you can see, the horizontal stabilizer has been removed. And in case you're wondering, why is the guy clutching a piece of toilet paper? The reason for that is I find even two or three days after the lacquer is dry to the touch, as you handle it, your fingerprint grease tends to react with the lacquer finish and can sometimes leave just huge, great grungy fingerprints into the paint. And even if you think it's not happening, just holding it in the same spot for, oh, maybe a minute or two, you go to take your fingers away, and next thing you know, oh my God, you've left a big fingerprint. So the horizontal stabilizer has been removed, and he's just sitting right here. The... Landing gear doors have been removed, and I'm going to be cutting those and probably spray painting those white. Uh, the main reason for spray painting is uh, whenever you paint something white, by the time you get a good solid coat on there with brushes, you end up with a lot of paint. Whereas if you airbrush it or spray paint it, not so bad. If we flip it over, You can see the absolute tragic lack of detail in the landing gear bays. Now, I understand that there are some aftermarket resin that you can get to replace that. Or I could have gone online and looked up some pictures of the undersides of a Canuck. And I really did consider doing that. And sometimes when I do a model, I go all out and I want to put all the details in. And other times... I just have the attitude of, I want to build this, I want to make it look nice, and I'm not going to go crazy on the details. 
I'm not planning on entering this in any contests or anything like that. So I just bit the bullet and put it together, basically stock. The landing gears are just a pressure fit right now. They're just there so that I've got some place to stand it up. Moving on, I'd like to draw your attention to the subject of decals. These decals are the ones that Hobbycraft supply. They're, well, I don't even want to say they're okay. They're pretty sad. They do give you the Belgian markings, which is appropriate because Canada did sell a batch of Canucks to the Belgians. However, if we look at these numbers, they're very, very soft in their outline. Uh, the detail on the maple leaves is pretty soft. Um, uh, if you look down here, you can see the red and the blue are not in register. And I just wasn't really happy with these. So I went online and I discovered that a company called Canuck Models makes decals not only for the Canuck, but they also make them for other Canadian aviation subjects, such as the CF-18, um, I believe the Voodoo, the Tudor, and if we want to direct compare, you can see how much more clear the Canadian rondelles are, how much more clear all of the markings are, and as well as that, there's all kinds of data markings. Then there's another sheet with more markings on them and a third sheet. So these are the ones I'm going to use. And I ordered these online and I received them about a week later. So I'm very happy with these and we're going to use these as opposed to these ones. Okay, before moving on, or rather what should have been done weeks ago, and in fact was, is deciding what paint scheme we are actually going to be using. This is the booklet that comes with the Canuck graphic, or Canuck decals. And this shows you where to put all the various warning markings and data plates and things. This sheet gives you the options. We have 425 Alouette Squadron, 445 Wolverine Squadron, 440 Bat Squadron, and the 419 Moose Squadron. Upon a consultation with the people really in charge in my house, my daughters, they decided I needed to build the one with the lightning bolt. So that's why it was painted in natural silver. And that is the squadron we're going to be going with, the 445 Wolverine Squadron. And as well, if we flip this sheet over, it also shows the markings for the underside. Very comprehensive marking instructions. Like I said, this, uh, this decal package is just amazing. This is something I recommend if you can possibly set it up. Here's my working area. And I've used a couple clothes pegs to hang up the instru instruction sheets for the decals. And that way I don't have to worry about them falling off the table or being in the way or anything like that. And they're handy. So if you can set something like this up, it's always, it's always worth the time. Okay, now let's get started. And this is the part that I really, when I, when I talk to other people, I like to say, this is like putting the icing on the cake when you build a model, is putting the decals on. Even when your paint is awesome, Putting on the fine markings and the logos and things like that, or national markings, that just makes a model pop usually. So, I've got a shallow dish of water ready to go. I've got a couple of knives ready to go. A pair of tweezers is handy. Let's get these wheels out of the way. Now, it doesn't matter if this is maybe... Let's say you're putting together a kit by Italeri, 
and you've already built five in a row by Italeri, I always recommend that the first decal you put on is not a major decal, that it isn't a one of your, your USAF markings or a rondelle or something like that, that if you screw it up, you're really screwed. I like to stop, start with a small marking, uh, usually one of the data plates or something like that. That way, if your decal sheet is just does something really tragic, they break up when they hit the water or something like that, or you have to take a few steps that you don't normally take, you can practice on an inconspicuous decal versus something that you can't replace. So the markings we're going to start with are these little guys right here. And they say trestle here. There's four of them. They go under the nose and the tail. And it's basically where they're supposed to support the plane when it's the landing gear are being worked on. So they are number eight. And I'm actually going to cut them out as a block. Now, I don't know how fast these decals are going to separate from the backing in the water. So, I'm only going to take one out to start with. Once you know about how fast the decals are reacting to the water, then you can start getting ahead of yourself and saying, okay, I'm going to pre-cut one, have it soaking while I'm putting another one on. But like I said, until you know... Don't get ahead of yourself. So I'm going to grasp the model with my toilet paper. And I'm hoping that we'll be able to get this on camera, putting this decal on. Just position it. And right now I'm looking on the instructions to see where this part has to go. It has to go right down there. Chase the decal. I usually like to put the whole piece of paper down. As you can see, the image is starting to move. And sometimes a knife blade, if you're careful, can drag it over. And that is showing on camera, fortunately. So these decals don't take a long time to separate from their backing. We'll get that out of the way. And let's make sure it's straight. There we go. First decal is in place. Once again, I'll get that back on camera. He's where he should be. And I'm probably going to be using decal setting solution on it. This is the brand I use. It's actually for model railroading. I find it's pretty strong. So, once again, in the spirit of test first, and then use it on the big ones, we'll let this decal set for a few minutes, and then I'll put some of the set on it, just to make sure that nothing tragic is going to happen. Okay, I've let this set for about 10 or 15 minutes. And I've dabbed it with some toilet paper to make sure there's no water on or under it anymore. Now, it's not as though this piece here is really going to need to be bedded down, but it's a good guinea pig for our setting solution. I'll just paint a little bit of that on. You had to be careful because this is a liquid and it could refloat your decal, and I have had that happen sometimes. But we're just going to let that set and make sure that it doesn't wrinkle up into a little ball. And here's a little, guess how I found this out. 
when you're using your decal setting solution, don't have your plastic model cement in a small, similar bottle nearby. Move him way out of the way. Guess how I found that tip out? Here's the trestle decal from the other side. As you can see, it's come away from the backing. We'll move it a little closer to where it needs to go. And it's occurred to me that putting decals on on camera is probably one of the most failure prone things a person can do. Much as I enjoy putting decals on, inevitably one decal will come astray and you'll spend an hour trying to fix it. Get that out of the way. There's the crashing elephant stomps on my head above me. My workshop is underneath the front door of my house. So you're hearing my daughter come in the door and the dog freaking out. That's good to know. Once I got rid of the extra water, this decal, it didn't want to move. So a little bit of toilet paper just to wick up that extra water. There we go. Let's flip it over and take a look at the one we put setting solution on. So I'm not sure if we're getting a good focus on that, but it has not gone all wrinkly. Nothing tragic has happened, so we shouldn't have any problems using the decal setting solution on this model. Okay, I know we're jumping a bit ahead right now, but as you can see, I now have the decals on around the cockpit. And there's quite a bit of reading material around the nose here. Mostly regarding the radar and things like that. Underneath, we have the trestle markings showing where the plane is supposed to be supported when the landing gear is off. So now that we've got the boring stuff done, we can get on to the, the cool stuff, the RCAF markings, the rondelles, and that sort of thing. Okay, as you can see, I've had one of the rondelles soaking for a little while. Let's put the other one in the water so we can get a head start on that. Now I've already looked at my color diagram to say just to see just exactly where this has to be placed. And pretty much this rondelle has to be centered on this panel join right here. So we'll put him on and good, he's starting to move. Get the paper out of the way. And look on my diagram again. So when I say centered, it's centered on this line. Um, it actually is, actually it is almost centered on this line as well. And that's one of the things when you're putting things like national markings on um, or any sort of major marking is look at the panel lines and figure out just exactly where something needs to go so that you're not figuring it out later once you've got it on the model. So we'll scoot the clunk over here and we'll see if this guy is ready to go. Yep, he is ready to go too. And get the garbage out of the way. And once again, we'll make sure we're centered. And we'll look from side to side to make sure the maple leaves are basically doing the same thing. Because you don't want to look at one side and say, ooh, that one isn't straight. It's definitely crooked compared to the other one. I suppose that's where a British rondelle would be 
a lot easier. You wouldn't have any branches or leaves of the of a maple leaf to compare. And I think this needs to go a bit farther forward. Looking side to side. Okay, now it's time to do the rondelles for the underside. Let's make sure we get lots of water on this guy. And that one's ready to move. Good. Just getting the paper out of the way. Now, the decal instructions point out that the national marking goes on right over top of this trestle marking. It literally covers it over. So if you're looking at it and thinking, what's he doing? I have already checked that that's what's supposed to happen. And that looks pretty straight there. These decals come off their backing so fast. It's amazing. Haven't had any problems with these decals so far. This needs to go a little higher. And especially if you're doing a model that has an up and a down to the national markings, make sure you've got it straight in advance. That you're not putting on, let's say, the maple leaf's facing the wrong direction. Or fin flashes where you have red forward. And maybe it's supposed to be red back. And now that I take a quick look on this one, the fin flashes are supposed to be red forward. So keep an eye on me, see if I make a mistake later on. So we've got our wing markings on. Now coming back to the upper wing. Now that they... Decals have started to settle in place. I'm just putting some decal setting solution on. And really all decal setting solution is, is it's a mild acid. A very, very mild acid, which attacks the decal just enough that it softens up and tends to drop into any cracks or panel lines or anything like that, making it look it's, like it's really painted onto the model. Okay, now, because the camera angle is going to be a little awkward, I've already done the fin flash on the other side. Or rather, the rudder marking on the other side is already done, so. Hopefully, we can put this decal on in such a way that you guys can see it. And hopefully, I won't sprain my hand in the process. Get that out of the way. Oh, a little bit of folding under going on there. As I drop a heavy piece of metal on my model. Yeah, that's a good idea. Swift. I think what I really need is a some sort of big heavy vise that could hold the model in place. And then I'd be able to use both hands on it. Now we're going to do the lower part of the rudder decal. Slide him over. Rotate that around. Hopefully you guys can see this nice and clearly. That's what I'm doing. Now I'll have to take a little bit of paint and touch up the very back of the rudder where the markings don't quite come together. But overall, I don't think that's too bad. And let's get the other marking on. Oh, 
Okay. All right. I know this isn't exactly in the middle of the frame, but it's about the best I can do. This particular marking is going on to the tail. And let's see if we can unscrunch that. Okay, nothing like a decal going totally wrong on camera. That fixed it. Let's get that out of the way. Okay, we've got that one on. Sharp eye viewers will have noticed that the the end of the last shot, the five was all screwed up and tucked underneath. I fixed that off of camera. This is a family show. We don't need any more swearing than necessary. But fortunately, I was able to unfold it without any problem. And you want to think ahead when you're putting decals on. Uh, I almost put the, the fin flashes, that's the part I just put on right now. I almost put it on first and then I realized I could better to put the numbers on first and then I know I've left enough room for them. So it pays to try to think things out one or two steps ahead. Okay, as you can see off camera, I put the aircraft number here on the back. I just didn't see how I was going to be able to do that on camera and maintain my sanity at the same time. But there's only one or two decals left and then we're going to be done. And one of those is this lightning bolt, which is going to be going on the engine to sell. And as you can see, I just broke it. And that happens. Then we'll slide him on. And then... Slide the other piece on. Broken detail, a decal is not the end of the world, but it certainly makes life a little bit more difficult. So, when I look on my painting guide, the lightning bolt should be changing direction right about that panel line right there. I don't know if you can see it. So, this needs to come way up, way up. Don't know if you can see it, but the whole plane is flexing under my hand. So we'll just shut this off for a second. Quick shot to show that I did in fact salvage the situation. The lightning bolt is all in one piece again. So you don't have to panic if a decal breaks. Just calmly slide the pieces together. And once they dry, nobody will be able to tell. There we have it. With the exception of uh, putting some decal setting solution on. The decals on this plane are done. There's still some more work to be done, but when I get it all together, I'll post another video for you guys to check it out. Decaling doesn't have to be a nightmare. Just take your time. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching, and see you next time on Dan's Model Works. Thank you very much. Bye.